This is a 1920 Harris engine. It's got a uh, 6.55 inch bore and an 8 inch stroke, giving them just about 1100 cubic inches. It was originally made as a stationary type engine to power harvesters and other agriculture equipment. Manufactured in Stockton, California. Uh, there was a huge amount of uh, manufacturing of all of your basic modern agriculture equipment, tractors, everything else were designed in that area from the 1880s through the 1920s and uh, pretty much made modern agriculture is where it started there. Uh, it has about a 4 inch by 30 inch flywheel. It's uh, rated as supposedly replacing 50 mules. Uh, not horsepower, but mule power. It's governored at 500 RPM and uh, pretty much the high tech of uh, 1920. All the individually you oil each, all the oiling and the valve systems is just give a shot of oil every two hours. It's got an automatic oiling for system that puts drips of oil down onto the pistons, splash oil inside. Uh, and a magneto drive and a, uh, a vacuum fuel pump. Okay. Car left really helps with this thing. One way to remove staked keys is to spot weld on the weld onto the end of the key, and attach it to a slide hammer, and then it comes right out. And you grind it off. raising up the freeze cracks in the cylinders. <laughs> the top end off. You can see how big the pistons are. Although, it's not until you put a... You can't quite see what's... You can kind of see the size of these. I'll tell you with a quart paint can on top and you can see the size difference. Let's see, what do you do when the cylinders weigh over 100 pounds each? Well, car lift. Here's an interesting thing about old cars and tractors. A vacuum fuel pump. Pretty interesting in that they have a mechanism in them that switches the vacuum, uses the actual vacuum in the engine to suck into this inner container. As it comes up, it shuts the vacuum valves off times it to where it can use the engine vacuum to suck fuel into the main tank and then shut it off into the small inner tank which is always open to the fuel 
system. You're open to the atmosphere. And it all hinges on this little flapper valve. See it? That little flapper valve that when there's a vacuum, it keeps the vacuum inside the inner chamber. And when the thing vacuums or the vacuum is released, it lets the fuel flow into the outer chamber. The outer chamber. Then you have your water drain and then your outlet to your carburetor. So this holds probably about a quart of fuel in it all the time. That way you have a kind of a clockwork vacuum fuel pump. Trick, huh? Okay, this is an interesting, uh, very simple oil pump. You can see it's just got two check valves. Let's stick those in. Drop them in. Each one sits in the bottom. And then a piston. And then a piston with a spring on it. And it goes in there. That's the pumping part. And the other part, what drives the pump, is just a plunger that works off the cam. I have the cam lobes connecting rods. And, uh, it's interesting that the everything is splash pumps it up into these oil channels and the tab on the bottom of the connecting rod comes by and splashes into it and throws it all over the place. And at the same time, you see the casting up on top there. See, it's got a funny, comes down to a point. That point lines up. Let's see from the other side. You see these drip points drip into these catches on top, little pools, and drain into the main cylinder. You can kind of see there. See how the drip and these splashes around. Of course it's being turned backwards right now. And it comes around to the splash points at the bottom. It's a few casting defects, and you see a big hole in the rod there. Nothing to worry about. But there's other spots in it that are large, kind of unfinished castings. Well, it's kind of, but I was going to prime it through. So turn off the spark. Is it on? You going? Yeah. So.
<laughs> I like it. I like it a lot. Okay.